Welcome back to our final edition of Live with Your Lobbyists. The Montana Legislature has officially adjourned, so uh, Rachel and I are in different locations. She broadcast live from our uh, from our Instagram account earlier today, so if you want to go back and check that out, she might have some different updates for you. I am going to just kind of start off and give you a little overview of what last week was like and then talk about some of the bills that we have worked on throughout the session, give you some updates. I was calling this one our final, but we might do one more next week or maybe in two weeks because uh, just uh, some of you probably know this, uh, if you're familiar with the legislative process in Montana anyways, the governor has 10 days to sign or veto bills that arrive on his desk um, or they can lay on his desk for 10 days and become law without his signature. Uh, so bills that passed on, you know, in the last week of the session have to go through the enrolling process, which is just a process of, of getting them printed. And then when that's all finalized, they go to the, uh, to the governor's office and he has those 10 days to uh, decide what to do with them all. So there'll be a little lag in some final updates, but uh, you know, we have a lot of good news for you this week already, so we'll just start with that. If you are watching, uh, please uh, shoot me a comment. Uh, it's the warmest day of the year. I'm at home now. I'm east of Miles City, and it is hot and windy outside, so I hope you're not burning or anything like that wherever you are. Uh, so send me a comment. Let me know what your weather's like, and if you have questions, of course, please comment them, and I will do my best to answer them. And uh, like I said, make sure you check out Rachel's update that was on the Instagram account earlier today. So she's back in Bozeman too. We are officially done with the 67th Montana Legislative Session. The session moved sine die, which is the motion for adjournment Thursday of this week, which was yesterday. And uh, so anyways, uh, so they are done. Um, and I'll just start off by saying that agriculture had a very good session. Uh, it's crazy how fast and how slow uh, four months go. And there's been a lot of changes over the, over the four months, but we've had some successes. And I'll start off by talking about some of the bills that the governor signed just this week and that we got to participate in the signing process, uh, in the actual signing ceremony. So great news, uh, Senate Bill, or excuse me, House Bill 302, which was carried by Representative Kassmeyer, uh, is a bill that uh, we have supported and helped pass through the legislature uh, multiple times in my career. And uh, it has always, well, we've always gotten it passed through the legislature and then it can't get over that last uh, step in the governor's office. This year, that was different. The governor signed House Bill 302, which is the bill that requires county approval before wild bison can be transplanted into a county. This is great news for Montana farmers and ranchers because it really provides you another backstop. It's local input on whether or not a wild uh, bison herd would be tolerated in that area. And of course, we know that our farmer and rancher members are opposed to the establishment of wild and free roaming bison uh, because of property damage, the competition for scarce resources, uh, the threat of uh, disease transmission. Uh, can you imagine what a, a herd of wild bison would do if they came through your wheat field a week before harvest? Uh, you know, things like that. It's just important reasons that we have worked so hard over many sessions to get this passed. And it was an honor to be sitting beside the governor as he signed that bill yesterday. So many thanks to Governor Gianforte. Thank you to Representative Kassmeyer for doing such a great job carrying this bill. And thanks to uh, folks who have carried the bill in the past, uh, folks like Senator Lane. Uh, all of you have done your part to really uh, help Montana ranchers and farmers and improve property rights in this state. So I just wanna thank you all. Uh, Thank you again, Representative Kassmeyer. It's a very exciting day and um, uh, just want to also thank the members who you know, have been strong in our position on this, that passed the policy. Um, actually, we have uh, Wes watching now. 
Uh, he was there at that meeting in Circle, Montana back in 2010 when the Macomb County Farm Bureau passed a resolution saying we are opposed to this establishment of a wild and free roaming bison herd. So um, your policy making has paid off. Congratulations. Uh, I will just quickly mention the other bison bill of the session is House Bill 318. That's uh, sponsored by Representative uh, Holmland from here in Miles City. And um, that's been at the request of uh, the Montana Association of Counties. That one clarifies the definition of what a buffalo, a wild bison or buffalo is. This is important for many reasons, uh, but one uh, simple one is that the definition was formerly different in different sections of code. So a wild bison was defined differently in livestock code than it was in Fish, Wildlife, and Parks code. Uh, this is a good, very important cleanup bill and provides us the clarity that we need. And so we thank Representative Hoblin for bringing that. The bill has passed the legislature and has been and is in the enrolling process. So that means it will be on the governor's desk very soon. So that's great news. Um, the other bills that were signed uh, this week that we're, we're very excited about are two uh, property rights bills, uh, Senate Bill 338 and Senate Bill 307. So Senate Bill 338, uh, both of these are carried by Senator Lang and 338 uh, it has to do with landowner liability uh, or property owner liability in the case of a trespasser. So this bill sh makes it so uh, the property owner or landowner um, is not going to be held liable if a trespasser illegally and without permission enters your property and uh, is injured in the process or while he is or she is on the property. Uh, unless, of course, there is some sort of willful or wanton misconduct. Uh, and so, I mean, it it's probably comes as a shock to a lot of people that that is uh, not the case now uh, because it's such a, a crazy thing to think that someone who comes onto your property uh, without your permission or maybe against uh, you know your explicit wishes for them not to enter and becomes injured uh, that you could be liable. So with the passage of that bill, that um, is no longer the case. And we really thank Senator Lang for carrying this bill. Uh, we thank the, uh, the Montana Chamber for their work on it, uh, many others. This is really important to all Montana businesses and um, especially to agriculture, to farmers and ranchers, because our property is not something you can just put a wall around and lock the door, as you all know. So this is great news. We thank the governor for signing it as well. Uh, kind of in the same vein, Senate Bill 307 is a bill that um, clarifies that all types of what we would consider uh, irrigation uh, conveyances, whether that word is ditch or canal or what have you, um, that they all fall under the same kind of limited liability uh, law that was already in place. So that's a really important one uh, for irrigators and um, irrigation companies. So uh, again, very appreciative of that bill and um, want to thank the governor for signing it as well. So it was an exciting day. Uh, I should have brought one of my pens in here. Get you When you go to a bill signing, you get to uh, keep the pen that the governor signs with. And it was just a real honor to see some bills um, that are so important to agriculture be signed into law. It was actually uh, the first time in my seven sessions that I have had that honor. So uh, a great, a good day for me personally, but a great day for agriculture, for business, for property rights. So exciting stuff there. I don't want to just ramble on about bills that you all don't really care about. <laughs> so if there's something in particular that you'd like to hear about, please do comment down about it. Oh good, Molly's commenting. Oh, <laughs> thank you, Molly. Um, appreciate that. It's an honor to have the executive director of the Montana Coal Council watching us today. <laughs> thank you. Uh, so I'll just keep rolling until somebody interrupts me or until I get tired, I guess. Um, these live videos always feel a little funny. But uh, let's talk quickly about some of the governor's tax bills and other tax cut bills, uh, for example. So you've heard us talk a lot about House Bill 303, which again was carried by Representative Kastmeyer at the request of the governor. It's a bill that 
reduces the business equipment tax simply by increasing the exemption from 100,000. It went to 200,000 in its original form. Now the bill actually exempts up to $300,000 worth of business equipment from taxation. So that will be a huge help to Montana's farmers and ranchers and other small business owners. And you know, everybody benefits from that. So great news there. That one um, has passed the legislature. Uh, there had, you know, with the incoming dollars from the American Rescue Plan Act, which is federal legislation from the Biden administration, it's uh, meant to be stimulus funding. Uh, you know, it, it brought $2.7 billion into our state, but it also brought some restrictions on the way that money could be spent, but also other things that you could do within your state as far as tax cuts. So this bill and several others uh, had some uh, coordinating language added to them to make sure that they stay in compliance with those. But you can be, um, you know, you can, you know, stay tuned for the final uh, word on this, but rest assured that we finally have some really important business equipment tax relief in this state, uh, something that we've been working on for many years. So that's very exciting also. House Bill 159, or excuse me, Senate Bill 159 from Senator Hertz, also at the request of the governor, reduces the income tax uh, top rate from 6.9% to 6.75%. That bill had kind of a wild ride. It passed the Senate and went to the House Tax Committee. They amended it down to 6.5%, then they tabled it, then they took it off the table and amended it back to its original form and amended in the coordinating language. It now coordinates with the tax simplification bill, Senate Bill 339 or 399 by the same sponsor, and also makes itself compliant with the ARPA restrictions. Uh, so again, another good uh, tax cut bill. Uh, and then you've also heard us talk about House Bill 258, or excuse me, I'm not doing very good with numbers today. Good thing the session's over. Uh, 252 from Representative Jones at the request of the governor. It's a tax credit for employers who send their employees to skilled training, uh, skilled, skilled trades training. So again, maybe not a bill that's going to directly impact, like give a tax credit to a farmer or a rancher, but certainly going to benefit us by getting more skilled trades people in the workforce, which is essential. Uh, we all know how long uh, we are on waiting lists for a number of trades. So. A great thing for rural Montana. Thanks for tuning in, Jason. Thanks for all of your work on the bison bills, especially 318. We're looking forward to getting the news on um, on when the governor plans to sign that one. Hopefully, hopefully he does plan to, and, and we see that one become law too. So great work. Uh, I do feel like I'm rambling a little bit here, so please, please, folks, jump in if you have any questions. Um, uh, one thing Molly might be interested in, Senate Bill um, 63, which was sponsored by Senator Anthony, and uh, clarifies that, or actually makes it so, uh, ag and grazing leases can continue on state lands, uh, even after they've also been leased for wind energy. It did that by changing uh, kind of the classification of wind, solar, and, um, and those types of renewal energies away from uh, a designation that is more meant for actual buildings. You know, if a Home Depot gets built on a state section, it's pretty hard to graze under that building. But we all know that cows can graze underneath windmills and you can farm beside them too. So that was a good clarification bill. That one's passed and um, uh, on its way. Well, it's, it's with the governor now, so we hope to see that he uh, signs that one soon. Uh, and so that's good news. Senate Bill 58, for those of you interested in wildlife depredation, that's a bill that gives an additional $100,000 to uh, the Livestock Loss Board for uh, predator prevention type projects. Uh, that bill was also passed and was signed by the governor actually a few, few weeks ago now, uh, so that's good news. You know, these, uh, these bills really have run the gamut uh, this session and they we've done a lot of good things. Uh, the legislature has done a ton of good things for agriculture in a, you know, a multitude of ways. Uh, I'll, I'll mention one more, uh, oh, one more that had kind of an interesting process. And that was Senate Bill 306, also Senator Lang's bill, that 
uh, did two important, well, two changes. Uh, one change, uh, there's currently five members of the Fish and Wildlife Commission, which is the commission that sets a lot of important uh, hunting and fishing regulations uh, and, and rules and a number of things like that, advises the department in many ways. So obviously a lot of the decisions that they make directly impact Montana farmers and ranchers. So uh, this bill uh, did two things. It expands that from five to seven members that coordinate with the, the Fish, Wildlife and Parks districts. And it required four of them to be farmers and ranchers. Uh, which of course our members supported. You know, we're the people impacted by these decisions, by the by the wildlife living on our private property. And um, you know, oftentimes, most times, farmers and ranchers are sportsmen and sportswomen ourselves. So we wanna, you know, we have that practical knowledge of licensing and things like that. Uh, that bill passed the Senate, it went to the House. Uh, I believe it was tabled, then it was taken off the table and amended. Uh, they amended it down to two members of the uh, of the commission being f required to be farmers or ranchers, and, and also so also to be landowners and active uh, in production ag, so farmers or ranchers. Uh, it uh, the Senate did not concur in those amendments, and it went to conference committee, and they came to the shocking conclusion. You know, one said four, one said two. They came to an agreement of three. And that did pass and we'll be headed as governor. Uh, that'll be a really good good thing to help recognize the role that farmers and ranchers play in this whole wildlife uh, hunting fishing world. And so we appreciate again uh, Senator Lang for bringing that forward. Uh, it's really important. A couple others that are still in play, uh, House Bill 660 and House Bill 668. 660 is the bill that provides additional funding for the Made in Montana program. And Made in Montana, of course, also includes made in, or grown in Montana and um, Native American made in Montana. And this program is really, um, it's already established. It's housed in the Department of Commerce. It doesn't have a ton of funding, but it is a well-established program for marketing. And we've talked a lot about um, Consumers wanting to know where their food comes from this session. You heard me talk about the placarding bills and how um, a lot of the proponents argued that that would require, uh, you know, grocery stores to tell people where their food came from. And unfortunately, uh, those bills just, they just didn't work. They, they required grocery stores to do something they couldn't do or in a way that would actually have been, had the opposite effect. So. Stockers and Farm Bureau were very active in getting, um, um, surfacing this idea of House Bill 660 to add some funding to that Maine in Montana program. Representative Kassmeyer did a great job of carrying it through. I have to thank uh, Senator Osmondson for his help on this too. He is, uh, you know, he's the chairman of Finance and Claims. He is very, uh, you know, he's very supportive of agriculture and also just very skilled and um, just uh, brilliant in finding, you know, knowing how to um, work work in um, work things into a budget that uh, you know there's a lot of a lot of uh, needs for and doing it in a conservative way. And he was very helpful uh, in this bill. Uh, so thanks to both of them and everyone else who was involved. Uh, we are excited about the passage of that bill because now more farmers and ranchers will be able to take care, uh, take advantage of that program. Uh, they'll be able to, you know, there's it's, there's a certification process, uh, and then you're able to add a Made in Montana label to your product. So whether it's bread or meat that's processed at a state or federally inspected plant, or whatever you may be selling here in the state. Uh, it will add value and it will provide uh, consumers with the information they want. Uh, and if they want to know that their meat comes from the USA, wouldn't it be even more essential to know that it was grown here in Montana? So we're really excited about that bill. Hope to see the governor sign that one as well. And again, thank uh, uh, the sponsor uh, and the carrier uh, for on the other side of the uh, aisle, or I mean on the other side of the the other house 
uh, sorry, uh, for their, their work on that. Uh, 681 is something that will be particularly helpful for uh, helping us market our, our high quality ag products out of the state. It's an, it creates an account uh, for uh, funding for port authorities to use to improve infrastructure, specifically in places where we'll be able to put in large projects and help directly export to uh, you know foreign countries. The Montana Mystique lives on all over the world. Uh, we know that consumers in Taiwan, for example, want our Montana specific uh, you know, hard red winter wheat, uh, our spring wheat, our Durham, uh, and, and now we'll be one step closer to being able to deliver that to them, uh, bringing inputs in and shipping our products out as well. So um, that one also has passed and is awaiting the governor's signature. So I feel like I have rambled on long enough. Uh, I don't see any more questions in, so I'm gonna wrap it up with just a short uh, discussion on some of the funding bills. House Bill 2, as you know, is the uh, budget bill. It's the budget for the state of Montana, and it includes many, many things. It uh, coordinates with many other bills. It includes the budgets for all the agencies, um, some projects, things like that. It was passed, uh, and I also, you know, the, the, that's a tremendous lift. Um, you know, Representative Jones and Senator Osmondson do a great job of shepherding that through the process. I have to thank uh, Senator Osmondson and Senator Bogner for helping um, in uh, secure some funding to help the Department of Livestock start pursuing this, the Cooperative Interstate Shippers Program, which is an FSIS approved program that will help uh, our state inspected plants opt in if they wish uh, and then be able to ship their meat uh, in interstate commerce. So that means across state lines if they opt into this program. So it, you know, it has to start with the Department of Livestock and then spread to the plants. So we're very excited that uh, the Department of Livestock can start pursuing that and start providing more opportunities to the meat processors in this state who then will provide more opportunities for farmers and ranchers to do more marketing. So very good stuff there. Uh, that's one highlight. Um, House Bill 632 was the bill that uh, implements the ARPA money and uh, I just have to applaud everyone involved in that process because I mean, we were handed that federal funding with not much guidance only about a month ago and they just worked and worked and put in a you know a great solution and got that passed in time for our, uh, for us to adjourn on the uh, 80th day so that's good good news save 10 days saving money for the taxpayers of Montana. Uh, also on the money side, you heard us talking early on about um, support for House Bill 14 uh, by Representative Hopkins that uh, had funding in it and um, authority in it for building a new veterinary diagnostic lab, some maize, some Montana Ag Experiment Stations projects, and the wool lab. And uh, those all made it through the process and we will be moving forward with those. So all great news for Montana agriculture. Uh, you know, we could talk about this stuff forever. So I'm going to sign off. I see I've already bored most of you. There's only four watching now. If you're watching later, feel free to leave a comment. Uh, I hope I, I mean, there's hundreds of people I could thank uh, for all of their great work throughout the session. So if I didn't, didn't say your name, I didn't mean to skip over you, uh, you know, there's uh, a tremendous amount of work that goes into this process and I applaud the legislators and I just um, also want to, you know, encourage you at home to thank your legislators for the work that they do. Uh, it actually, it, it hurts my heart when I see the um, little posts on Facebook or something that um, are, uh, less than kind to our elected officials because at least for our, you know our legislators here in Montana this is a citizen legislature they leave their homes their families their work uh, and go to Helena for four months and um, they don't get rich doing it either and some of the some days are really fun and some days are really hard 
and uh, the, what, what they do as a true service. So thank them, I thank them, and I thank you for tuning in and bearing with us through this whole uh, 14 or 15 or 16 weeks or whatever it's been now. Uh, we probably will do another one. Uh, Rachel and I will figure out a time when we can get together, announce our award winners, uh, probably give you the year-end statistics and things like that. Uh, I can't tell you the, our success percentage rate yet because you know we're waiting on final action on a few bills, but I can tell you that every bill we opposed was defeated. So, uh, like you've heard, probably heard me say in years past, sometimes killing the bad bills is more important than passing the good ones. And we were able to kill all the bad ones again this session. So that's great news. All right. Thank you, Bill. Appreciate that. Well, we might not be doing weekly updates anymore, but we might try to, you know, uh, update you throughout the year from time to time. We'll come up with a new schedule. We thank you again and hope you have a great day. Thanks. Bye.